Titleable Textures got you down? Not a problem. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I use the noise inside of Unreal Engine's Material Editor to dynamically mask multiple textures together. I'm using this in two different methods. One is a material for a landscape with sand to break up the tiling across the full landscape. And the other, I'm using the noise to create a custom material where I'm using it against two roughness maps. Now, I can't say this is the most official method ever, but it worked good in a pinch and I was pretty happy with the results. Hope you like it. Here we are in the desert. We've got pyramid little things and a landscape. So I'm using the noise to mask in two different ways on this. Uh, it's actually the same way, but I'm using it for two different purposes. The first that you'll see here is this landscape and I'm using some mega scans. I've got two different materials that I'm using for sand and I find a good spot to kind of show here. You can kind of see that one, I've got kind of this wind-blown texture and pattern that you would see on dunes. And the other one is just a bit more plain sand. And I kind of wanted to break up between the two of these. So at large distances, you can... Well, it still does a pretty good job. Uh, but if you get in close, you can start to quickly see like, okay, yeah, there's still this tileable pattern that you can kind of pick up on if you look closely. Like I can see... Um, these little notches that kind of give it away. But for the most part, especially when I get close to the sand, this method's been pretty forgiving. Now, the other method that I'm using is kind of just to make a custom material. So if you look on this little pyramid here, I have a solid color and I'm pretty much just using this noise to break up two roughness masks and I'm kind of multiplying and using that to tweak this to kind of get a custom material and I can swap these roughness masks out. All right, enough of an overview. Let's look at what we're working with. So I'm going to open up the material instance. I'm going to show you at least what I've got here so I don't have to explain it again when we're looking at a node graph and then we'll dive into the material. Normal flatten, uh, I'm using this pretty much two separate materials here. So I've got two base colors, two normals, and two um, ORD. And I'm using this just for roughness. I'm not using this for ambient inclusion or depth or anything else. I've also got roughness multipliers, basically controls for each material that I'm using this noise to mask off between the two and their own set of UV coordinates so I can scale them independently and kind of tweak each material as I see fit. Let's look at the parent. Let's expand this guy. So all those controls that you just saw, this is the result of it. So I've got material UVs one, just so you can see what I'm doing here. I built a material function. I've got my UV setup, so scale, offset, and rotation. You can screenshot this and rebuild it, but I made this into a function because I didn't want to copy and paste this a million times. And then I duplicated it and renamed it so I have independent UV controls for base color one. And then I went through and actually renamed these with a one afterwards so we didn't have duplicate controls and I have control over each section. So if you want to do these independently and you want your UVs to work that way, make sure that you make two functions with uniquely named uh, variables or controls or parameters or whatever. Okay, so the main thing that we're going to be using here is noise. So as you can see here, there is a noise node. So if you right click and go, we've got vector noise. And that is exactly what you see here. Now what I'm using is the absolute world position. And I've got a noise scaler that I'm going to use. Now, I started with 0.1, I think I got down to like 0 0.01 or 0 0.001, but to get large blocks of it, we scaled it way down, but no big deal. So absolute world position, we're gonna multiply this parameter, noise scale is what I called it, and we're gonna pipe that into position. And that's more or less it for the noise. That's at least what I did. You could expand on it if you want and you need something different, but I used a lerp for each set that I've got. So you can see roughness here. I've got my roughness multiplier that you could see uh, right down here along with all these controls. And all of this stuff feeds into a lerp. So roughness one, roughness two. Exact same thing with base color one, base color two. We've got A and B, and we are using the output of this noise as our mask in the alpha. And I did this for every 
set of textures that I've got. You can see flat and normals one and two for textures, normal one and two. Rinse and repeat for this whole thing. And then in these uh, lerps that I've got, I just pipe the finished values into the correct spots. Now, I'm using Substrate. I'm in 5.3. I don't know if it's official yet, but uh, Substrate's being used. Just pipe these into your normal material if you don't, if it doesn't look exactly like this. It doesn't have to use Substrate for it to work. So that's the base setup of this whole thing. So pipe it back into here and I've applied it to my landscape. Now I'm gonna walk through really quick and just show the slight difference on this texture. Let's go into noise mask. Pretty much the exact same thing. I just don't have two sets of every single material. So I've got a base color that just the color, metallic amount, uh, the normals not doing anything with that. I kind of basically have a material throughout and then these roughness maps are the only thing that I'm really controlling to kind of get the look of this. So same setup, not terribly different, but if it's at all confusing, you now see the difference. Okay, so let's actually just give you a quick demo of how this actually works if you are curious. So this noise, zoom in nice and tight. So what I wanted to do is to be able to control the roughness parameters on this to make it as shiny or whatever as possible. <laughs> shiny as mad as possible, I guess it's not whatever. Um, but I can kind of scrub through these and art direct it a little bit to whatever I think that I want out of this. I'm like, all right, well, say that's cool. Say this kind of looks sandish and we got shiny stuff because, you know, there's a million shiny pyramids out in the desert. Now, the last thing that I want to do is this noise scale. So, yeah, 0 0.005. If I set this back to the default value, which is 0 0.1, you can start to really see the density of this pattern. And if you wanted something that looked like, you know, cheetah pants, you could use this. But I wanted to go much smaller, so I just started going in smaller increments. And, you know, at one tenth of that, that's kind of nice. That might be able to work, but I split that in half and that was getting a little closer to what I wanted. But you can kind of start to see that as you crank this up, um, if this is what you wanted and you kind of wanted to use this more like a dither pattern, you could use this noise to selectively mask this stuff off and get a bunch of different effects. And the same thing goes for this landscape. So this one we're masking between, you know, diffuse normal and roughness all together and the noise scale is pretty small so if i yeah now i start to like crank this up and you can see like it's pretty much at this point like 10 even one the pattern is so small that it's kind of just blending between these two and it's kind of this big mush of just two textures so we keep shrinking it down until we start to notice a difference and now you can start to see it a bit try to get in pretty tight let's go even smaller and this is starting to break it up so now you can see patches of this windblown section and then also patches that's a little more flattened and the noise is pretty random as i look across the landscape like it it's kind of hard to spot the tile from here and i was actually surprised this was fairly forgiving in this landscape and you could probably break it down even further and now it's a little more obvious so here's some flat parts that kind of blends into some wavy parts and you look across the landscape this just gives you that much there so it's pretty simple pretty straightforward but uh, when I didn't want to add in a bunch of blocking volumes or objects or even other landscape elements like this is just a single landscape that I could go through and paint the the deformation of this and then use this PCG on top of it, it was pretty quick to get this effect. Um, probably would look a little bit better with some blending around the edges and, you know, go under the surface and, you know, peekaboo, there's the rest of the pyramids. But this worked for me. And I will say that we minimize this down. Let's go into sequencer. But when I get this low, it's it's even i mean to me it seemed even more forgiving so kind of flying across this landscape i wasn't seeing this tiled pattern everywhere that i looked thanks for watching hope this solved all your tiling problems uh, if it did or if it didn't 
hey, you know what to do. Do all the stuff. Thank you.